I was massively inspired this week when I read the story of Chelsea Cameron. Chelsea was born into a childhood of adversity. Her parents were drug addicts, in and out of prison, and they failed her on many levels. Despite this, she's written them an open letter to thank them, saying their feelings have inspired her to be better. In many ways, Chelsea is like me. My childhood was not a bed of roses, far from it. But like Chelsea, it's made me who I am today. However, more and more, I see kids getting everything they want from their parents. Brand new iPhones, the best trainers, and generally just being mollycoddled to within an inch of their lives. I see a culture of expectation and a generation of kids without even a spark in their belly, let alone a roaring fire. Michelle, I, I read the letter um, that she wrote, you know, an open letter to her parents, who were both drug addicts. I thought it was desperately sad. Mm. Did you? Yes, I did. I, and, but also Amazing. I thought, here is someone who... Is, I didn't think it was uplifting as you did. I thought oh. this is someone who is angry, yeah. actually, no. is when I read it. I thought this is someone who's angry. I hope she, she gets her out, and it looks like she's got out. Uh, I, it would be interesting to know who helped her get out because I bet you she didn't just do this on her own. There was a teacher or someone would have helped She talks a lot her. about the church, doesn't yes, she? Yes, yeah. she talks about the church. Someone would have helped her yeah, to get out. Yeah, for sure. My, my problem is that for every person like her and possibly you like this, there's another hundred if not a thousand who don't get out. Yes. Yeah, so that experience, that terrible experience damages them forever and they never escape. Yeah, and um, I think that's fair. And what I would say is, um, so I do like a, a, a bit of motivational, inspirational speaking, whatever you want to call it. And I will always say when I do that, you've got to have a why. So I'll always say when you've had like bad things happen to you, because I'm a big believer, I don't believe that biography equals destiny. So I believe that the story of your past does not have to project onto your future. And it's very hard to, to change that. But what I say is you need a why. So for me, very sadly, what changed my life was my I lost my sister um, very unexpectedly and that devastated me and my family. But it, that was the trigger for me where I was like, enough, something's got to change. I don't know what it was going to change, but something had to change. So I had that trigger. You know, Chelsea talks, talks very much about the church being a, a, a guide, you know, and a support for her. And I just think... Um, the reason I picked it, I didn't find that letter sad. It made me cry. I found it inspirational. I shared it to high heavens on social media. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. And I shared it in a bid to inspire people because I think all too often we have, you know, we've seen it in our government, we have this troubled families program where we're spending so much money trying to change families and it doesn't work. And then it just makes me want to shout the message that you can change your life, you know, things can get better. And on the flip side of this, I then do a lot of work to get young people into employment. And I'm always staggered by how little fire in the belly a lot of young people have. So, you know, you've got the adversity on one side, but I've moved on now. I'm talking about the people that haven't had those experiences, are sheltered and protected very much by their parents, who are trying to be good parents. And for me, it's left those kind of people with a sense of entitlement. They don't want to start at the bottom. They don't want to do what they deem as crap jobs. They want to be elevated in. And that's the bit that frustrates me. So mm. I, I admire you, Michelle. I think, you know, talking about the difficulties. That, <laughs> I admire Michelle. Oh, I do. And I think, like, the way that you have talked about your own difficulties is the, probably the most powerful thing for other young people maybe going through what you went through, you know, and to talk about your journey and the fact that you've turned it into a strength. And I know other people who've had really difficult lives who've turned it into a source of strength and they say that they wouldn't change anything because they wouldn't be the person they are today without it. But on the other hand, I think that, you know, um, life is difficult. Everybody, even if they're privileged, has difficulties. And so as a parent, you don't want to deliberately create hardship for your children because life does that for them anyway. And actually, if you look at the parents, and I think the, the mother made a statement giving her response to the letter, and she said, no child should have to go through what Chelsea did and live that kind of life. I am ashamed and upset at my behaviour, and I'm so sorry and so proud of her. Mm. I mean, I think, I think it is really touching. My, my parents didn't you know, were able to give me a really good childhood, but they still made me work hard. You know, I, I had my first job when I was 13 and I had to earn all my own money. And I think there's like a balance where you can avoid people going through the kind of trauma that only a few like you can make it out of. Like Greg said, so many others end up 
really dysfunctional, you know, because and even if they're successful on one level, then the trauma and pain they experience can still affect them in other ways. What do you think, Nick? Um, well, the, the, it's very. It was, I agree with Greg. The, the letter actually I found very. I think it's a very unfortunate and quite angry and let's hope and she's obviously a very determined young woman so we wish her well coming back to your broader point yeah how many trainers are you allowed to buy how many what, what level of iphone can you give your child what, what, what you because if you've made a few quid mm -hmm. don't you want your sons or daughters to benefit a little bit and you give them nice stuff of isn't course, that the but idea for me i feel very strongly that children should know the value of things should understand and should have to work for things so I get it as a parent you of course want the best for your child especially if you're a parent that didn't have stuff you want to you know not replicate your childhood with your own children but I just think you know I've got children that are close to me mm. and it blows my brain come Christmas day they get everything but not even Christmas day they can be out and they've got an iPhone they'll lose their iPhone and they'll mm. get it replaced for them you know and it's just where is where are we teaching the kids I think the this value is, this is what interests me about the letter and I agree with both of you I think it was a bit passive aggressive she could have frankly sent it to her parents rather than published it online and have it go viral she only did it as a personal blog it was then ah, picked up and it okay. went viral all right i accept that but to me it, it just tells us so much about our expectations of what modern parenting is and i'm not thinking about the trainers and the iphones i'm thinking about you know parenting's become a profession since i was a child my parents had four kids and then my dad went on to have two more they just let us get on with our lives. I mean, there wasn't this constant what do you mean hovering. They let you get on with? What does well, that no, mean? I mean, they got, I should say, what I mean is they got on with their lives. Right. And they, you know, parenting was something so that you were. So did you have you a good were. childhood or not? Parenting was something you were. It wasn't something you did. It wasn't a profession. You just became a parent. It wasn't then your job. And I think she's calling out her parents for her not meeting certain minimum parenting yeah, requirements by the standards of the day. But when you look at British attitudes, sorry, Gray, but when you look at British attitudes towards parenting in the 50s and 60s, like, I find it traumatic. I Hold mean, on, I'm not that you, old. No, I know. <laughs> I'm 17, no, but 18, I'm saying that I know that... <laughs> Just generally, <laughs> actually, right. The yeah. time, you know, the time yeah. when parents, you know, parenting wasn't taken so seriously. Parents, you know, were advised to not spend too much time being affectionate with their kids, you know, to shake their hands I, in the morning no, no, and no, stuff no, like that. Not what you I, know, said. I mean, I think it's, it's not what I said. No, but there's a I reason said that why parenting evolved. In my lifetime, parenting has become literally an accredited, kite marked <laughs> profession, and I think that is ridiculous. And I think, yes, I think I, her parents were delinquent and drug addled, as she says and obviously did not parent her. But, don't but what I think it tells so us is that there's this very judgmental culture on parents. I think we're, we're partly responsible for what's happened as journalists, no, in truth, because, I mean, I came, we, as a kid, I went out in the morning mm. at nine o'clock, we went out with your mates, you played all day, went back for lunch, you went out again, played in the afternoon, that's what, in the holidays and things like that's what you did. Today, parents, I think, are much more scared than my parents yeah, were. Yeah. But there's no more, there's no more no evidence more of any no. more danger. It's just well, no, that there is more, where there is oh, a well, danger. So, no, hold on, uh, social media. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, I'm glad yeah. that my kids are, golly, 13, 28 or whatever they are. I, yours are a little bit younger. Yeah. You're yet to have, you, you yeah. will have far bigger challenges as a parent than, than, than Rachel and I have had or than Greg has had. Because social media, guarding against that, that's what's dangerous. Yes, I, right? I'll accept that. But, but I'll don't accept you think, that. like, because like, like I keep saying, I work with a lot of kids trying to get them into employment. They just seem to lack a bit of gumption. They seem to lack a bit of what I call fire in the belly. They don't, mm. To me, it's like, I'll talk to them. Like, I, I go on a road show, I go up and down the country, so I do this all over in different cities. And I'll say to these kids, right, you can start here, you can get this job, you can do this, and they're like, a I mean, I don't, I don't want to bring this back to Brexit, but you know the thing people always say, that like, oh, people how do you don't want to do even that even do Brexit? Go. No, but people, people, young people in this country, you know, don't want to do the kind of jobs that maybe our generation did, sweeping floors, cleaning toilets, like, you know, yeah. Lots, I was a checkout girl. I, I bet you were terrible. I was very good. Well, I, I sold shoes and I was yeah. a genius. <laughs> <laughs>